when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my think about being able to sing together with my church family. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, I'm not saying that singing in our living room with three people wasn't in good uh, and worship, but boy, it is a whole different world, isn't it? When you get to be with the whole family, and, and you get to sing together, and you get to, to pray together. And there's just, I think that, that something about this time over the last three months or so that, that when we were apart so much, really, I hope for you, it, it helped you uh, appreciate as much as it did me appreciate just being together with my church family and being able to worship together on Sundays. And uh, so I, I say that to say that, you know, lately on Sunday mornings when you get up, I, I've been thinking, wow, all right. I'm excited about what this day means. I'm excited about what we get to do today, who I get to see today, and, and the conversations that I get to have with people, and the singing that I get to hear and participate in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, I think for all of us, regardless of whether or not that applies directly to the current situation and Sundays and, and everything, all of us have those days when you wake up just a little more excited than usual. 
because something is coming. You wake up that morning and you think to yourself, yes, today is the day that I get to what? How have you filled in that blank before? Today is the day that we're leaving on vacation. Yes. I'm excited about where we're going or what we're going to get to do when we get there or whatever. Today is the day that I get to finally go on that mission trip that we've been planning and preparing for for so long. And, and we've worked hard on and we get to go see people and work with people that, that we know and we love and we're excited about that. Today is the day that I get to see some old friends. So some folks I haven't seen in a while, some, some old friends that I haven't seen in years, and, and today is that day. You ever wake up on certain days and think, I cannot wait for this day? Of all the ways that you could fill in the rest of that sentence, what it is that is getting you particularly excited about that day, I don't think I have ever met anyone in my life who wakes up in the morning and says, yes, today is the day that I get to do laundry. <laughs> now, I may be wrong. There might be somebody here who absolutely loves doing laundry. And whoever that is, you're weird. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there may be somebody that really loves it, but I've never known anybody in my life that wakes up in the morning and thinks, yeah, today's laundry day. I'm so excited about all the things that I get to do today, washing and drying and folding and hanging. And, and then guess what? I get to do it again in like three days. <laughs> Isn't that the problem with laundry? <clears throat> it, it becomes a tedious and laborious task because... It never ends, right? You do all the laundry in, the, in your house. You, you, you clean every stitch of clothing in your house. And you might even have this sense of accomplishment at the end. And then at the end of the day, what? There goes those clothes in the laundry hamper that you wore that day. And now they're dirty. And guess what? You could do laundry the very next day all over again. Right? Laundry is just one of those tasks. It's got to be done, though. It's not like you get to skip it as much as you might try. It's, it's not like you can avoid it. It has to be done. Clothing must be maintained. No matter what kind of clothing it is, no matter what store you bought the clothes from, no matter how much you paid for the clothes, it doesn't matter. It has to be maintained. Now hold that thought for just a second. We have been studying from the book of Colossians. We've been studying in Colossians chapter 3 for the last few weeks. And we've talked about the importance of setting our minds on things that are above. We start off by pointing out that Setting our minds on things that are above means a spiritually focused mind. We're focused on spiritual things, not worldly things. We're focused on eternal things, not uh, temporal things. Okay? And then as we work our way through Colossians chapter 3, we see that there's two sections in the last two weeks that we've covered. Uh, Paul talks first about the things that need to be put to death in our life. Those ugly, sinful worldly things that we just need to be completely rid of. And then last week we looked at the spiritual clothing that Paul says we need to put on. Put on then things like meekness and humility and kindness. And we talked about the fact that our spiritual clothing needs to continue to be what represents us when we step out into this world. It needs to be the first thing that people see coming. Well, today, we're going to talk about the fact that that spiritual clothing, much like our actual physical clothing, must be maintained. There are still some things that we need to do on a regular basis in order to continually wear that same spiritual clothing. 
Because if we continue, no matter how good you are, at continuing to practice forgiveness and patience and kindness and all these things, it is easy in the world in which we live for that clothing to wear thin. I mean, think about how often your patience wears thin. Some of us more often than others, right? It's difficult because of the world in which we live to keep that clothing in good shape. That spiritual clothing has a tendency to, to wear out on us pretty quickly sometimes. And so Paul continues here in Colossians 3 to show us how to maintain that spiritual clothing. So what I want us to do as we conclude this series of lessons is I want us to actually read the entire section once more, starting with verse 1 of Colossians chapter 3. You want to open your Bibles uh, there. Colossians chapter 3, and we'll start reading with verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Okay, so today we're going to focus on those last three verses there. After telling these Christians in Colossae about the clothing that they were expected to wear, Paul focuses on three things, briefly, that are a part of our spiritual maintenance. Okay? If, if we want to avoid breaking down as we practice these things, as we make these, these attitudes a part of our daily life, if we want to keep them from wearing too thin... We need to maintain them. I want to notice three ways in which he says that. The first is through the peace of Christ. Now, I would suggest to you that there are two parts to this concept here in Colossians 3 regarding the peace of Christ. The first is possibly the one that, that came to mind for you first. This peace of mind that we can have. Uh, Peace of mind, though, is, especially today, not very easy, is it? There's so much unrest in the world in which we live. There's so much turmoil in the world in which we live. There's so much doubt in the world in which we live that peace of mind seems sometimes like a very foreign concept to us. But I want us to remember the words of, of Paul as he wrote to the Philippians 
And in chapter 4 of Philippians, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then notice what he says. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul says, if you want to be at peace, in this life, if you want to have peace of mind, then there's really only one way to do that. It's to have that constant, continual connection with God through prayer. But there's more to the idea of peace than just that inner, personal peace of mind. There's more to it than just a state of, of mind. Because, notice that Paul actually says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Now this is really important because the word that Paul uses that is translated rule is a very unique word. In fact, this is the only time this word shows up in the entire New Testament. And so when you look at the way this word is used in some other uh, ancient Greek texts, you find out that this word carries with it the idea of an arbitrator, of someone who is the, the last and final judge and authority. And so, I think if you think about what that means and you try to translate that a little bit into maybe some more modern ideas... What Paul kind of is saying here is we need to let the peace of Christ be our referee. Okay? You think about the referee or the umpire or whoever it is, whatever kind of official there is. Two teams are playing against each other or two individuals are playing against each other. And there's this umpire, this referee, who is the final judge in authority. They have agreed to let this individual determine what's right and what's wrong, what's in or out, or ball or strike, or fair or unfair, or whatever, right? This is the meaning of that word that Paul uses here in Colossians chapter 3. So when making decisions in my life, no matter how big or small the decisions are, I need to let the peace of Christ Decide for me whether or not that is the right decision. This needs to be the final authority in my decision making. Jesus said something similar when he, he tells uh, his audience in Matthew chapter 5. Remember that one of the Beatitudes is, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. So in order to maintain our spiritual clothing then, we need to let the peace of Christ be our decision maker. So before I post that comment or that image on social media, before I say the first thing that comes to mind in a conversation, before I hit send on that message to someone, I need to run it past my referee my umpire, the peace of Christ. And I need to ask myself, is this something that is going to create peace or create strife? Is this something that is going to uh, seek peace in the, my relationship with this person or am I simply trying to win an argument? It, it, am, I, am I trying to bridge gaps with people, or am I trying to prove how right I am and how wrong everybody else is? Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, Paul says. The second piece of spiritual maintenance is quite simply, Paul says, be thankful. It's pretty short, pretty to the point, it sounds simple. It's not always that simple, is it? You might even look around the world today. You might even look at the things that you're dealing with in your life and wonder, how can I be thankful right now? 
Is it actually going to have any effect on me at all? Well, let me ask you this. If, if you are stressed more than usual lately, if you're worried more than usual lately, if you're fearful more than usual, depressed more than usual, angry more than usual, on and on and on, the kinds of emotions that are easily stirred in our current circumstances, if those emotions are taking over, I want you to ask yourself this morning, how much time have I spent lately being thankful for what God has given me? How much time have I spent lately considering how blessed I am by God? A friend of mine shared uh, these, these comments on, on uh, social media recently, and I thought it tied in very well to what we're talking about this morning, uh, particularly the message of Colossians 3. Now, I don't really know who the original author is or who this, this happened to. It may be something somebody completely made up. Okay? But this little story, I think, helps us understand the concept behind be thankful. I want you to listen with me as I, as I read through this and just think about uh, how this might apply to you. Sometimes I just want it to stop. The talk of COVID, protests, looting, brutality, on and on and on. I lose my way sometimes. I become convinced that this new normal is real life. But then I met an 87 year old who talks of living through polio, etheria, Vietnam, protests, and yet he is still enchanted with life. He seemed surprised when I said that 2020 must be especially challenging for him. He said, no, I learned a long time ago to not see the world through the printed headlines. I see the world through the people that surround me. I see the world with the realization that we love big. Therefore, I choose to write my own headlines, he said. Husband loves wife today. Family drops everything to come to grandma's side. He patted my hand and said, old man makes a new friend. His words collided with my worries. And they freed me from the tether I had been holding tight. And those worries floated away. And I was left with a renewed spirit. The ability for us to maintain our spiritual clothing very often lies in our ability to avoid being bogged down in all the troubles of this world. And that's so challenging at times. But thankfulness is the key. Thankfulness for the people in, that are in our lives. Thankfulness for the beauty of God's creation around us. Thankfulness for the love that we are able to share. Be thankful, Paul says. And last but certainly not least, Paul says that in order to maintain our spiritual clothing that we've put on, we must let the word of Christ dwell in us occasionally. Is that what your Bible says? No, your Bible doesn't say that. Okay, well, does your Bible say, let the word of Christ dwell in you when you have nothing better to do? Is that what, yours doesn't say that either. Or, or let the word of Christ dwell in you when you have time once you've completed your list of tasks for today or this week. If anybody has a Bible that says that or anything like that, uh, I just want you to know that at the doors we have trash cans uh, ready. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble because I'm telling people to throw away their Bible. Uh, no, that's not what your Bible says. 
Your Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Paul says. Now, just to be clear, when, when Paul uses this word richly, we're not talking about the value of the word of God. Now, certainly we can go many other places and recognize the value of the word of God. But this is a word that means the volume of the word of God. The abundance of the Word of God. And so, so what Paul is trying to help us understand here is that the Word of God needs to be a consistent and constant source of knowledge and information in our lives. In order to maintain a spiritual focus in this life, the Word of God must be an abundant source of instruction. It needs to be a constant flow like a, a flowing river through our lives in everything that we do. Because, as A.W. Tozer once put it, the Holy Scriptures tell us what we could never learn any other way. They tell us what we are, who we are, how we got here, why we are here, and what we are required to do while we remain here. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, abundantly, throughout your life. If we want to maintain that spiritual clothing and we want to keep it from, from wearing too thin, we need the word of Christ. We need the word of God to be an abundant resource in our lives, a constant flow of information in our lives. And we need to be thankful so that we don't get bogged down in all the worries of this life. We need to be thankful for all that God has given to us, and we need to be at peace and peacemakers in all that we do. We need to allow the peace of Christ to rule in our lives. That's the three things that are going to help us Keep our minds set on things that are above rather than focusing so much on the turmoil of this world. And I hope this morning that, that you can look at Colossians 3 and you can look at the things that Paul says here and you can say with confidence that, yes, I, I am living a life that is focused on things that are above. And you can with confidence say, yes, I, I have spent some time... Uh, this week, uh, engaged with the Word of God and allowing it to, to inform me. And I have spent time being thankful with God. And I have spent time making sure that the peace of Christ is ruling in my life. But maybe, just maybe, challenges of this life and of this world and the temptations of this life have overwhelmed you this week. And maybe what you need is prayers on your behalf. Maybe what you need is the encouragement of your brothers and your sisters in Christ. Maybe what you need today is to give your life over to Jesus Christ because you have not made that choice yet. You haven't allowed the blood of Jesus to wash away your sins in the waters of baptism. You haven't repented of the sins in your life. You haven't Confess the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Whatever it is that you're dealing with this week, whatever challenges you're facing, whatever hardships, whatever difficulties, know that our God is bigger and stronger and He can take those burdens from your life carry them for you. So if there's any way that we can help you give those burdens over to Jesus Christ, if there's any way that we can help you to be more at peace in your life, I hope that you'll let us know right now while we stand together and while we sing. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling Calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching. Why?
right now we're going to take this bread, which represents his body that was broken. Uh, I can't imagine the pain that he went through. We're just so thankful that he did for us. It's in his name we pray. God, we're so thankful for the blood that was shed on the cross. That's what was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And again, we're so thankful for that. We can't understand the love that you show us, the grace that you show us. We're, we're just so thankful. Be with us now as we take this cup. And it's in your sins and we pray. Amen. I'd like to remind you that the Bibles are set up in the back. If you want to uh, leave a verse for Tate and Laney, uh, they would really appreciate it. That's one thing Laney has continued to ask for. Um, if you see the things on Facebook for uh, the t-shirts, uh, if you want to share it, that would be great. We're trying to get people to uh, help out Big Green. Uh, we've got one more song, so if you will stand, uh, we'll sing this, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer. Over all the earth, you reign on high, every mountain stream, every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams, in my darkest hour. congregations are still not meeting together, Father. We're just thankful that we do have the opportunity to come fellowship together. And Father, we pray that our worship today has been uplifting. The prayer worship has been good and you're pleased. Thank you for everything you do for us. We pray especially today for those that were mentioned that need special help, those that are sick, shut in in the hospital. We pray especially be with each and every one of those this week, Father. Thank you for the rain we had today. Thank you, Father, for the opportunities you give us to go about and serve you throughout the week. And pray that you'll be with us this week and help us to glorify you in everything we say and do. In your son's blessed name we pray. Amen.